This is Jack Rice at the United Nations. I'm here with Mitch Shea, again, the media officer with the Counterterrorism Committee, the Executive Directorate. Mitch, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. I think about terrorism, and obviously it's a huge issue. After 9-11, first of all, it was, it was a huge issue before 9-11, but I think in the minds of Americans, at least, we saw terrorism as the fundamental issue. What is the role of the United Nations, and how do they work in dealing with this worldwide issue? Well, my office is connected to the Security Council, and through the Security Council mandates and a couple of different resolutions, uh, our job has been to really um, sort of work with member states to identify uh, their strong points, uh, their weaknesses, any gaps that they might have in their counterterrorism ability, and then to try to help work with them in tandem to uh, uh, with donor countries to find uh, expertise to help them build up that capacity that they need to fight terrorism. Do you find that they turn to you, or will they turn to the U.S., or will they turn to others? I mean, sometimes there's this sovereignty question, number one, but then they're thinking, well, gosh, it's not just about getting expertise, it's about getting the money, the money yes. and the expertise. No, um, uh, fundamentally foreign policy is you know, done on a bilateral basis, so a lot of countries will turn to their friends and allies first, uh, but we hope that through the U.N. and the U.N. mechanisms, we can provide some sort of, um, uh, sort of a, a broader-based approach. Uh, where uh, a country may uh, identify a need for specific equipment, we may look at not just the equipment, but also the laws that they need to have passed, um, any regulations and uh, international cooperation and so on. So we approach it from a multifaceted, holistic uh, point of view. When we look at terrorism, sometimes it seems to me that it, we look at it in a very narrow fashion. Sometimes terrorism is a result of things, the, the failure of a state in general, and you get somebody who will come into almost a, cr a criminal element, and then uh, all bets are off. If that's true, then how do you deal with that, or do you leave that part to others? Well, some people use that as sort of an ex excuse or take advantage of that type of desperation or feeling and exploit that in terms of their recruitment. Well, from my own perspective working at the UN, I think what the UN can provide is, again, this holistic approach. If we deal with poverty and we deal with hunger, we deal with the political inequities and so on, we will no longer give these um, extremists, if you will, um, the opportunity or the reasons uh, to exploit that type of dissatisfaction. So it's not to say that if we wipe out poverty, we'll wipe out terrorism, you know, hand in glove like that, but I think it will be, um, you'll, f you'll find fewer people turning to uh, extreme measures or extreme ideologies because they will no longer feel that sense of desperation that can be exploited by people. I can think of Afghanistan and what's been happening there. They're actually producing, exporting uh, more heroin, more drugs than we have ever seen, and that's a fact. You can't, you can't stop that, or at least we haven't been successful at stopping that. Doesn't that sort of exacerbate the exact problem you're about here? Absolutely, and there are different UN agencies that are working in Afghanistan to help farmers develop all livelihoods, whether that's to stay in farming but to grow different crops. Uh, job training uh, programs to get them uh, in a different field where they can have more economic opportunities. But the reality is we find that uh, the other side of it, the demand, makes it more lucrative for them to stay in the, the heroin uh, growing business. So you need to sort of tackle that side of it too, the social dimension of uh, reducing the demand so therefore there's no incentive for these people to continue to grow the, the opium. Now I'm thinking about Colombia, you know, with, with the cartels who were smart enough to say, well, gosh, if the, if the international community isn't doing this, if the country isn't doing it themselves, and I'm talking about building schools, helping uh, families, helping communities, we can do this ourselves, we can exacerbate the situation, and we're going to get all of those people looking to us, and then, then the cartels did very, very well. How do you address that side of it, not just Colombia, I'm talking about anywhere in the Absolutely. world? And that's why, again, the United Nations needs to support you know, legitimately elected governments and give them the, uh, the, the support and the expertise uh, so that they can uh, you know, provide the services, uh, the legitimate services that uh, their people need. And uh, there'll, be less of a, there'll be less space for these type of uh, non-state groups to come in and sort of uh, serve as the social institutions. and. You know, but um, but it, you know, it's a long, you know, road to hoe, and uh, we've got to have all the different actors here at the United Nations cooperating together with the member states. Are you optimistic that in the long term you're going to be able to succeed? Sure, that's why I'm working here. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's it's a bit corny to say, but um, no, it's you know. a, it's a disaster. I, it's, uh, everybody's going to die, and the world's sure. kind of come to an end. Yeah, no, but I think you know, there's a bit of uh, that idealism that drives each and every one of us that works here. So um, that's you know when. Like with any job, you have your ups and downs, and I think that's what you have to keep your focus on, that 
in the long run, somehow or another, our efforts, however small or big, will, will eventually pay off. And, and I really see that in, in, in our counterterrorism work. You know, more countries are receptive to what we're trying to, to help them with. And, um, you know, they, they might come to us with the approach that, uh, oh, we're like the, the bogeyman and we're going to uh, evaluate them or give them bad marks. But that's not, our, that's not our job. Our job is to really identify where their weaknesses might be, support them in that effort. And af afterwards, more often than not, they're really thankful that we actually came and talked to them about these kind of difficulties. Mitch, thank you so much. My pleasure. As we talk about terrorism, counterterrorism, we realize it is not just something that happens right here in the U.S. It happens on a worldwide basis. And I guess where, who better to go to than the one world body who looks at it at that level, the United Nations. This is Jack Rice in New York City.